Now, what about ARP? What about ARP? Let's do this same simulation again. And this time though, what we'll do is we'll look at ARP as well. So we're, we're interested now in also looking at ARP. And what I'm going to do is I'll go back to real time mode briefly and we'll go to PCA and we can look at PCA's ARP cache by putting in an ARP A and you'll see that PCA knows 192.168.11 PCB's MAC address and it knows the default gateways MAC address and that's how it's able to communicate to those devices. However, what if we delete that ARP cache, ARP D, and we delete it and now we put an ARP A and you can see now the PC has no idea where the devices are. So a protocol that happens prior to the ping happening is ARP. And what ARP will do is it'll broadcast and it'll say, I need the MAC address for this IP address. And that's what we're gonna see right now. So we'll go to simulation mode. We're looking now at ARP and ICMP, and we're going to ping this remote network. So we'll go here and we'll, we'll do a ping to the server on the remote network. There goes the ping. We're in simulation mode. There is the packets that are queued up. Notice though, that it's not just an ICMP here that's queued up, it's an ARP first. So first, the ARP protocol needs to do its job and find the MAC address of the default gateway for PCA. So that's what, what ARP's gonna do. Now let's take a look at it. We'll hit forward. Here goes the ARP broadcast. We'll open up this ARP broadcast frame. Look at the inbound PDU details. And we can see here that at layer two in the ethernet frame, the destination MAC address is a broadcast MAC address, all Fs. The source MAC address is PCA, but the destination is everywhere. In other words, this, this frame is gonna go across this green network, everywhere in the green network. And it's basically gonna say, we need this IP address, 192.168.0.1, we need the MAC address for this IP address. And you can see, the target MAC address right now is all zeros. It's unknown. We need this. So it's basically a request for the MAC address of 192.168.0.1. Tell PCA at 192.168.0.10 who has this MAC address. And then we'll see what happens here. So this, this ARP broadcast gets flooded on the network here, or gets broadcasted on the network. It ends up at PCB. PCB says, I'm not 192.168.0.1, so it drops it. However, R1 is 192.168.0.1, so it's gonna reply with its MAC address. And we can look inside here and see that. Inbound PDU details. This is from the router to PCA, and the target MAC address is here. And that's what we wanted, right? We wanted to know what is the, um, actually, I'm sorry, this target MAC address is the destination MAC address of PCA. However, the source MAC address is in here and, and you know, the source, and then PCA will learn the MAC address of the default gateway. So let's watch what happens here. So now it gets there and now PCA can do the ping because it learned the MAC address. Now, if we, if we go in here and we watch the rest of the communication, there goes the ping and the ping happens. And now the ICMP uh, message can be sent. Now I'll reset the simulation and we'll take a look on PCA and we should see in the command prompt that PCA has now learned that MAC address and it had to have, otherwise it wouldn't have been able to send the communication. And you can see, yep, PCA now knows that 192.168.0.1 MAC address is here. And so that is, that's the process that happens. Now, the other thing that I should mention in this video as we do it is that the switch similarly, right, will forward out of the correct switch port if it knows the MAC addresses that it's trying to reach. So if we look in the switches table here, we'll go into the switch command line interface, type enable, and do a show MAC address dash table. 
you can see that the switch has been learning and building its MAC address table and knows that on port 2 is this MAC address, on the gigabit interface is this MAC address, and on this uh, switch port is this MAC address. If we want to see which ones those are, I'll just go to Options, Preferences, and show the port labels. And then we can see it a little clearer. So gigabit interface goes to the router, port 1 goes to PCA, port 2 goes to PCB, and we should be able to see that. So let's, let's open that up again. And there are the MAC addresses. So it learned about those MAC addresses. So it knows what to do. Now if the switch doesn't know the MAC addresses, the switch will act like a hub and will flood, will flood the frame to all switch ports except the one that it came in on. However, if the switch knows which um, MAC address maps to which port, then it will correctly forward to the correct port. And that's what it's doing right now because it knows these MAC addresses. So it won't behave like a hub, it'll behave like a switch and it'll forward it out of the correct port. Anyway, that's just a, a quick video on basically the host routing table and routing to local and remote networks default gateway in ARP. And also, if you wanted to verify those MAC addresses in those um, packets, in those frames, all you would need to do is open up the command prompt and run an IP config all to verify those MAC addresses. In other words, I can run an IP config slash all or dash all, uh, slash all in this case. And then we can verify that yes, um, the physical address of PCA is this MAC address, BA81, and there's the IP address. So as you're watching those frames or packets go across the network, you can always verify which MAC address it is that you're trying to communicate on. Now, does PCA ever learn the MAC address of the server over here? No, it does not. PCA will not learn the MAC address of this server. This is a separate network. The MAC addresses on the blue network stay in the blue network. PCA just needs to learn the MAC address of the default gateway.